Hurry, hurry, hurry. Step right. Schmidt beer, the brew that grew to be best in the Great Northwest. Your finest craft beer, Rocky. Man to man, smoke Roy Tan. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. And now, here are Greg, Scott, and Dan coming at you ice cold and unfiltered. Yeah, buddy. Yep. Welcome into the show. It's the Unfiltered Gentlemen, everybody. That's right. I'm Greg. That's Scott. Right over here. And that's Dan. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> welcome in. Right thanks over there. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you are. You're there. That's there you right. Are. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for telling a friend about the show. We much appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate you joining along and drinking along and sending us all your beer pictures and tweets and Instagrams yep. and all that stuff. Cans and beers. And yeah. Let's do it all. Hashtag show us your beers and hashtag cans for cans. Cans yes. for cans. Yeah. Uh, welcome in. Our burp word of the week, for those of you who don't know, if you're new to the show, burp word of the week is something we do so <laughs> when Scott burps, it doesn't sound like he's throwing up. Yes. <laughs> Instead, it sounds like something semi-coherent. Mm-hmm. To a word. Yeah. Kind of not throwing up. Yeah, kind of not throwing up. So anyways, the burp word of the week is Blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg. Oh. Yeah. Only two syllables. Blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg. We'll All figure right. it. We'll, we'll find out why in a couple of few. Uh, but Blitzkrieg. And uh, shout out. I should have prepared some music for this. Oh, I know. God, shout yeah. out. Opportunity right. missed. Oh. But shout out to Compton. Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> City of Compton. Uh, <laughs> never would have seen that coming, but no joke, Compton heading up our uh, weekly stats. So oh, Compton. Man. Yeah. Last week was LA. This week was Compton. I'm actually surprised they didn't. They, it's not the same thing that they separated them in our download stats. Like Compton and, and LA were two different things, mm-hmm. uh, but they are. And uh, thanks, Compton. Is yeah, Compton okay. in the house? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you should. Tweet us what beers you're drinking down in Compton. Oh, that is so gangster. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Now, you know, I believe... Oh, no, that's Inglewood. I was going to say Three Weavers Brewing is from Compton, but they're oh. from Inglewood. They okay. do amazing beers. I have some in my fridge right now. Really, really good. Um, but, yeah, so anyways, thanks, Compton. Yeah, yep. no kidding. CPT. Huh? The CPT. <laughs> oh, you down with CPT? <laughs> uh, yes. So, anyways, and we got the hashtags out of the way. I think we just need to get right into the important stuff. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend. And I say, I think I'll have myself a beer. Indeed. Why not? We, we talked about this one uh, a few months ago that it was being released. And I found it. Oh. I found it on a trip to NorCal. Oh. And I brought it home just for you fellas. It's delicious. Thank you, sir. I saw it and I thought, these guys are going to dig the fuck out of it. Oh, yeah. And we are drinking Drake's. War Pigeon Double IPA. This baby's 8%, has 87 IBUs, and has a 4.13 on Beer Advocate out of 5. Nice. From the brewery, says, Our newest IPA is dry and bright with the golden hue of a fading day. What starts as a faint hum builds to a roaring crescendo as the war pigeons take to the sky. A telegraphed warning comes over the wire, but it's too late. You've been hit. <laughs> we we devoid the freshest hops in our hop arsenal, and the payload is a blast of dank floral citrus. Very dank. Surrender, <laughs> surrender to the ar- aromatic Blitzkrieg as the hops rain down. From the war pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I think this one's got Dan's name written all over it. Yeah, it's very dank, very, very hoppy. IBUs are, you know, anything above 75, I'm all over it. Yeah, so, it yeah. makes you smile. Oh, yeah, definitely. It smells dank as fuck. Oh, yeah. Just you stick your nose in that thing. It's like, what's up, hop oils? <laughs> it's cool. Mm. Man, the, those beer descriptions, man, they just they don't get any better than that. I just can't wait to drink after I hear those descriptions. <laughs> it's so funny. Makes your palate get all excited. Yes, mm. right. <laughs> uh, definitely get that dankness on the tongue. I mean, really, it's a lot of hoppy flavor. It's got a nice little malty balance. I mean, first of all, I don't really taste maltiness, but you can tell that it's a little balanced out. It's not just like a total teeth puncher. Correct. But man, is there a lot of hop, a lot of dankness, a little bit of pine in there. Yeah. A hint of floral, oh, yeah. maybe. Yeah, that pine, too. Yeah. I think, like you said, though, it's very well balanced. Hit the it, pine! <laughs> where it doesn't um, 
it's not too much of one thing to it's like whoa it's just it hits you all you can you can taste it mm -hmm. you know you can you know you can smell it but you yeah. know it's very well balanced like you said yes. is probably the word for it yes it doesn't drink like an eight percenter no it doesn't no it doesn't <laughs> goes I like, down I was nice. like what eight <laughs> percent yeah Yikes. I'll have another uh huh uh yeah really good Scott fan oh absolutely yeah <laughs> right dink was that a stupid question? Yes. Okay. It's all gone already. Yeah. <laughs> Pen of what? <laughs> I'll have another. Yeah. yeah. I, for I forgot already. <laughs> Please, sir, I'll have what, another. What were we drinking again? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyways, if you're in the NorCal area, if you're lucky enough to have some shipments of uh, Drake's to your local bottle shop, make sure you check them out. I have had uh, a number of Drake's offerings, and I've enjoyed them all. Except, oh, Well, not to throw shade. I will say uh -oh. I was not a fan of their Imperial Stout. Oh, really? It was, uh, eh, just eh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was another like 8.5% or so. Mm -hmm. To that extent, like, all right, it serves a purpose. <laughs> but uh, it was not not a huge fan. But everything else wow. I've had from them, I've really, really, really enjoyed. Yeah. So overall, good stuff. Good. Um, I wanted to mention that we're going to do a, uh, coming up in March, we're going to do a March Madness bracket. Yep. Yeah. Breaking it up. Yeah. College basketball isn't the only cool thing to have brackets. We're going to have a bracket, too. We're going to do a uh, IPA March Madness bracket. Nice. We needed to choose one style of beer. It wouldn't be fair to do, you know, like Kolsch versus Stout. That'd be weird. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do one style. We chose IPA this year. You know, maybe next year we'll, we'll switch it up. Hey, yeah, so, there you go. Yeah. It's going to be a six-team bracket. Two teams mm. are going to get a first week bye. The other uh, four teams have to grind it out and then play the the bi week uh, teams and I'm gonna put up a poll somehow I gotta figure out how to do this on the interwebs or the websites or whatever you're gonna put up a poll the first uh, two rankings based on your votes they will get the first round by and then we'll decide the matchups based on the other results hmm. and then we'll th through the month of March we'll have a uh, March Madness tournament so yeah vote for your beer yeah Vote for beer. Yeah, hashtag vote for beer. Yeah, hashtag <laughs> vote for beer. So uh, I'll be putting more details out on social medias and stuff, but uh, check the website. Check our social medias, uh, The Unfiltered Gentleman, and at Unfiltered Gents on Twitter. Of course, our website, TheUnfilteredGentleman.com. I'd like to tell you that like it'll be TheUnfilteredGentleman.com slash bracket, but uh, don't take my word for it just yet. <laughs> I'll release details on the social medias. I got to get that all worked out. So okay. glad I'm organized. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Uh, a couple of things to mention. Um, oh, this is sort of a grievance. Have a grievance oh, to no. share? It's time for a crotch talk. Had to go to Covina. Mm -hmm. That's a grievance in itself. Oh, my God. No kidding. In fact, that's... I had to Say go to, no more. Yeah. I had to go to Pomona. Ew. Yeah. I had to go to Pomona. Uh, oh, Pomona. Hey. Yeah. Pomona. Send us your... Whatever. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing. Trying uh, the lady, for, yeah, nice A for effort. Yeah, <laughs> I could think of things to do in Compton. Pomona, yeah, I was gonna say, we, <laughs> nope, not Pomona. We got some love from Compton. Yeah, oh yeah, drain but, everything. Pomona, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> for those that don't know, the lady friend is a singer, and she often goes to auditions. And so we went out to Pomona for an audition. <sighs> it was at like. 9.30 in the morning. Ooh. Yeah. Which meant we had to leave here at like <laughs> 8. We had to wake up at like 7 on Felt a that one. fucking oh Saturday. God. Oh, wow. my God. Oh, no. God. So she goes into her, her little audition thing, and it usually goes for, you know, whatever, half hour or something. And I'm in the car. We got the dog with us. And I just I hop on Yelp, and I just typed in Dog Friendly Brewery. Oh, cool. like if I'm going to be out here, I'm going to fucking make yeah. the best out of it. Mm -hmm. Me and the dog are going drinking. Yeah. Yes. And it, by this time, it was like almost 10, and uh, I found one. Should have been drunk by then. I know. God. I was still <laughs> yes. sober. Yes. I was still dry. It was, uh, it was 10. I found one that not only allowed dogs, but opened at 11 a.m. I said, oh, we're there almost there. Oh, wow. Yeah. By the time she got out, it was like 10, 15, 10, 30. And uh, this one was in Covina, so it wasn't quite in Pomona. It was... Uh, out and equally as shitty. Uh, <laughs> punched it into the GPS and we rolled in like literally 1059. They were pulling out oh, their sign. Shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, we, we opened that place up. Right on. We walked in and this place is called Arrow Lodge Brewing. Like I said, they're in Covina, California. Uh, amazing. Mm. I was surprised, as anybody else should be, when they walk into a brewery in Covina, but holy crap, it was so good. First wow. of all, the inside was really cool. I posted a picture on social media a couple weeks ago or a week ago, whatever it was. I'll post another one. 
um, it looks like a uh, like a hunting lodge inside. Like outside, it's just a strip mall, but inside, it's like a hunting lodge. But you know, not gross with like animal hanging everywhere, but <laughs> but cool, you know. Yeah. And then they had some pinball machines. It's just a cool place to hang out. Cool. The uh, beard tender was very easy on the eyes. Oh, right on. Which wasn't too bad. Male or female? Female. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Could have been a man dime. You never know. <laughs> Man dime. <laughs> um, and we had we did a couple of flights. We essentially had every single beer they had on the list. We just had two flights. We're like, we want one of everything. And um, everything was good. They had an amazing coffee Kolsch. Really good. Their IPA was good. Their double IPA was good. They even had a guava sour. And I was a little afraid because, you know, we've been burnt so hard by Ballast Point with the whole fruit thing. I was like, guava sour. Like, uh, fuck it. I'm going to try it. We need to try everything. Mm-hmm. Really good surprisingly good right on um so if anybody finds themselves in the unfortunate place of being in Covina, california <laughs> uh make it better and go to Aero Lodge brewing and they allow uh they allow dogs so you yeah, have a dog so. with you it's good there you go yeah also went to wade's over the weekend wade's wines out oh, here in yeah. Westlake, california i love that place God, i do so much research there <laughs> uh did did a fair bit of researching uh all in the name of podcasting and of course and beer science that's right uh, I had a few good ones. There was a uh, there was one I didn't like. It was Pizza Port and Made West did a collaboration. Two breweries I love, yeah. and the collaboration to me just wasn't great. Oh man, yeah. Um, what else? Oh, Stone had Day Slayer. That was pretty good. Um, and I had Boulevard uh, Boulevard Brewing's Whiskey Barrel Stout. Holy shit! That was like uh, it was double digits. It was like twelve percent. <laughs> yeah, and it tasted like. Stout mixed with whiskey in the best way possible. Like it was delicious. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it was good. So if you see Boulevard's whiskey stout, like please do yourself a favor and pick up a bottle. Wow, really good. I can dig it. Yeah, I dug it. Wow, dug a couple. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had, to, I had to take it easy because I was driving, but uh, yeah, whew, that was tasty. Sounds good. Anybody have any grievances or good things to mention? I have to say, I did visit uh, Anna Kappa Brewing oh, after you said oh. that. You know, it wasn't. All, yeah. you know, it was good. Yeah, yeah, we had this discussion how yeah. like a few years ago we'd all been there. Yeah, you know, yeah. At, at various times, and it was like, Brr. yeah. And then I went back and had some good beers. Yeah, me too. I had a uh, kicking Thomas in the Ash Amber. Mm. Oh, nice. Just, I couldn't like you know sometimes a beer like grabs you by the name. I guess. Yeah, yeah. For those of you not from the area, that has to do with the big fire we just had in Ventura, the Thomas Fire. Yeah. So, so yeah, nice. I, I could dig it. It how, was good. Did you have any wings? Uh, no, I had a uh, jalapeno, jalapeno, jalapeno chicken sandwich, and uh, Ooh, it was delicious. That sounds baller. It was gangster. Wow. Nice. Very Compton. <laughs> <laughs> I see where you're going there. That's right. Yeah, well, it's nice to see Anna Kappa's turning around. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I'm not the only one that thinks that, because had you gone and been like, oh, no, Greg's an asshat, like, uh, oh, okay, mm -hmm. apparently my tongue doesn't work. Yeah. But uh, I really enjoyed it. No, it was good. Good. All right. Now Scott's got to go. No, I'm... You're not, you're not going to go? I don't have any... No, I'm saying you should go to Anacapa. Oh, to Anacapa. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were asking about any grievance. I'm no, like, no, 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 no. For no. once in my life, I think I was passed out for the whole week, so... There you I'm go. Good. For once. Yeah. <laughs> you mean again? Uh, passed yeah. out the whole week? Yeah. <laughs> um, like, like that's news. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's just a Tuesday. <laughs> Anyways, good news. Good news for us. The beer girl is back, and uh, she's gracing us with her much smarter presence. So uh, <laughs> here's you. Dale. What's this? A broad drinking beer? She must be a she-devil. Hey, strangers. It is me. It's the beer girl, a.k.a. the worst slacker you've ever known. But I'm really happy to be back and tell you about what's been going on and why I have been so MIA. First and foremost, I got a new job working for this new tap room and bottle shop here in Asheville. It's called Craft Centric, and I am assistant lead bartender as well as the social media manager. Basically now I am doing a lot of the things I did for my blog, It's a Beer Girl, for them. Therefore, my blog has fallen off from the wayside a little bit, but I'm still around and still posting when I can. Still loving Tasty Beer and still wanting to tell people about it. Related to my job and also to Tasty Beer, we recently did a collaboration with a brewery in Hendersonville, North Carolina called Sanctuary Brewing, and we made a peach mango milkshake IPA. The recipe for the beer came from our lead bartender slash jack-of-all-trades, Josh. He's a home brewer, so he brought this recipe to Sanctuary, and they tweaked it a little. One of the biggest tweaks was that uh, they are a vegan brewery, so we couldn't use lactose to make the milkshake, so instead, coconut milk was used, and that added a interesting flavor and mouthfeel in the beer itself. 
It was also brewed with a ton of mangoes, a ton of peaches, and then at the end it was topped off with mango juice. As you can imagine, this is an incredibly juicy, tasty beer. My favorite part about it though is although it's super juicy, it doesn't drown out that hop flavor, so you get that mostly on the, on the end of your sip. It's so good. It's got a creamy mouthfeel. It's now Sanctuary's top-rated beer on Untapped. And I'm very sad to say we are on our last keg of it, but um, if you're in the Asheville area, you got to come in and try it. It's so good. But now that the business is up and running and my schedule is less helter-skelter, I would like to say that you'll be hearing more from me if you'll, if you'll still have me and forgive me for my absence. Anyways, it's great to be with you guys again, and I will see you next time. Yes, yes, and yes. Of course. Of course, we will absolutely have you. Man, no you need kidding? for apologies. Yeah. What's that? Oh, kidding. oh, God. Come on. You know what? In fact, you're right. You should apologize and you should send beer. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. And then yeah. all will be forgiven. Yes. I, I, could, I could co-sign that. Especially now that she works at a bottle shop. Come no on. Kidding. Good Lord. Let's do that. It's everybody's dream come true. That's right. To just work around beer. Yep. <sighs> Man. Man. Send beer. We'll forgive you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the beer dot com <laughs> is where you can find Dale as well as it's the beer girl on all the social medias: Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of it. Make sure you follow her, uh, even when she's a little behind in her postings on her blog. She's always up on posting sweet beer pics. Mm-hmm. That's uh, true. Yeah. yeah, nothing like some good beer porn. So check her out. It's the beer girl. Uh, I think you'll be happy you did. Yep. Old timey word of the week: mm-hmm. word grubbers. <laughs> <laughs> I think this applies to us. Word grubbers. Persons who use hard words in common discourse. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. I right. filter the channel, man. There are a bunch of word grubbers over here. <laughs> Coming up with these word of the weeks. <laughs> trying to say bubs all the time. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I'd say that's probably the one, first one we didn't use a bubs, and I apologize. Yeah, do us a favor. Send us uh, like a tweet or something using word grubbers appropriately. And yeah, please. Send you some stickers or something. Yeah. Let's move on to, to bigger and better things. All right. This one's a classy dame with a great palate. It's Beer Babe of the Week. Ah, uh, yes. Beer Babe of the Week. You can follow her on the Instagrams. At Carabobira. Dan is, uh... Oh, what? Huh? Wow. I, I'm, uh... He's admiring the beer. That's right. Mm-hmm. Very, very good beer. I can it, tell you exactly what it was called. Do tell. <laughs> I don't know. Hazy. <laughs> it's called Hazy. Yeah, that's Drops right. Drops beer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Carabobira. At K-A-R-A. Underscore. B-O. Underscore. Beer. Underscore. A. Finer. It's it's a rough name, but uh, too many too many underscores. Yeah, it'll it'll be worth the search once you uh, get there. Definitely. Yes, absolutely. So Carabo Bira on the Instagrams. Follow her. I don't think you'll be uh, sorry you did. Nope. Showing some great beers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag cans for cans. <laughs> uh, of course, we'll uh, repost so everybody can see on our social medias as well. But make sure you're following her. All right, it looks like there's still some beers in the glasses. So before we call to the bullpen, correct? Uh, I believe Scott has a Tales from Uber for us. Does your cabbie make you queasy? <gasps> it's Tales from Uber. Yeah, I'll share a couple of uh, situations. It's kind of a quick because is it Uber Eats is getting very popular. Oh, yeah. Even McDonald's is doing it. McDonald's. And here's my here's my rant, and I'll do this real quickly. Is because I'm I'm so old. I remember when you how had, old? Is, oh no, yeah, you're gonna find out. <laughs> oh. I remember when I used to have to ride my dinosaur down there to get food. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Where you had to get actually get out of the dinosaur and walk in, and then all of a sudden they had drive throughs You go to the drive through. You don't even have to get out of your car anymore. You just go to the drive through. Now we have Uber Eats. You don't right. even have to leave your house anymore. Yeah, it's great when you're stoned. Yeah. Uber and, and and drunk and God, I've had a lot of stone people getting hungry. I bet. So anyway, just a, a couple of quick stories. One of the Uber Eats I had, um, as soon as I signed on at four in the morning, I got an Uber Eats for a McDonald's. And I'm thinking, who wants McDonald's at four in the morning? Uh, well, who else? Who do you think? Stoners. That's exactly. Right. But when I got to the McDonald's, the guy told me this guy or this person requested this at one in the morning, and I'm like, wow, that's you know. The the good thing is they don't 
start cooking the food until actually a driver says, I'm accepting the thing. Okay. Oh, okay. So, it's been sitting there for a while. <laughs> yeah, well, it's McDonald's, so I'm sure it'd take a couple weeks yeah, for it to start to go Yeah, they can't bad. tell the difference, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so when I, I'm, when I got there and the guy told me, yeah, they requested it, and so he gives me the food. And so I, I put on the app that I received the food. I'm heading to your house to deliver it. Then I get a call, and this person says, "I've been I I don't want the food anymore, but I don't know how to cancel it." Mm-hmm. Oh, and so I'm like, "Okay, no problem. I will cancel it for you." Which they will still get charged. Here's the they get still get charged for the food and the delivery. Oh, oh. but but you get a cheeseburger. <laughs> so I I turned go. around, and the thing is, when I was there, there was another Uber driver there who was going to the airport, and so we kind of talked for a few minutes. And when I, I just turned around the park and went back. And he was still there, and the manager's like, what's the problem? I said, they canceled. They didn't want the food. And he was like, okay. He takes the bag, and he goes, well, you know what? I'm going to throw this away. Do you want it? I'm like, sure, why not? Yes, I do. And I wish I would have looked in the bag before I left. So I took the food, and I left, and then I went, you know, to a, like, wherever all the homeless people hang out. Yeah. Which yeah. is where I live. Yeah, start started shooting up. And, <laughs> yeah, in West yeah. Hollywood. Yeah, after I shot up, I'm, yeah. I got the munchies. <laughs> So when I looked in the bag, there was a quarter pounder cheese, a order of fries, two orders of 10-piece McNuggets. Oh. Wow. So, I mean, I ate the, the quarter pounder and the fries. And I'm like, dude, I wish I'd, you know, I could have offered the other driver oh, like yeah, some food some because nuggets. I'm not going to eat all this shit. Not a it. Nuggets fan? Um, it's a lot of food. Yeah, yeah. That's but you chose the quarter pounder over Well, I'm more of a quarter pounder than a all Nuggets right, guy. Right. I'm more of a, you know. I know. When I'm hammered, like, I want nuggets bad. Oh. I'm a red meat guy, so. Mm. I'm like know. that guy in Australia who ordered a thousand nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> That's so I ended up throwing the nuggets away. Or I didn't throw them away. I set them next to a trash can thinking, well, if there's a homeless guy, you know, around. Hey, know, jackpot. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Right. That's right. And, and it wasn't even Thanksgiving, but he he doesn't know. You're right. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, I ate the quarter pounder and the, and the fries and, you know, when I'm away. And then the other one. Very quickly, another uh, Uber Eats well, is the same thing, three, four in the morning, and some guys ordered food. And so when I got the food and I took it to the guy's house, <laughs> and the guy says, so um, I asked McDonald's to give me $30 change. I ordered it on a credit card. <laughs> and I'm like, well, they didn't give me any change. It doesn't sound dicey at all. No, I'm right away. Yeah, I'm like, uh, okay, what kind of a scam are you pulling? And yeah. First of all, he, you know, you have to order the food on a credit card, right? So he's like, well, here's the deal. He goes, I'll give you a fifty dollar, uh, fifty dollar tip on the credit card if you give me thirty dollars in cash. <laughs> <laughs> and this Nigerian princess is going to send you $30 million <laughs> if you give me your bank account number. Oh, and I'm like, wait, say that again? He goes, well, here's the deal. I want to go to 7-Eleven and buy some stuff, but I don't want to use the credit card. So right away it tells me, you're not using your own credit right. card for this because 7 Eleven's going to ask you for an ID. So I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? I know. He said, are you sure? He goes, $50 uh, I'll, I'll give you a $50 tip right now, and you give me $30 in cash. But do it quick before this gets canceled. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm not going to do that. And What I wanted to say is I'm not as stupid as I look. There right? you go. But, you know, they, Thank I, God. I'm sure they probably figured that Pretty out. Pretty streetwise over here, <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah, Compton. This is why that's guy, right. <laughs> this is why guy knows what he's doing in Compton. Yeah, now. that's right. So, uh, yeah, so uh, that was my other Uber Eats. Uber Eats is getting very popular, by the way. Do you prefer the Eats or the people? Um, you know what? It's kind of... I, I like the Eats because I don't have to deal with people. Oh, yeah. But the pay is not as good as actually dealing with the real people. Oh. Uh, because uh, it's closer and... Yeah, I mean, who's going to order food 50 miles away? Right. <laughs> so, you know, where I get it, you know, I, I get a ride once I go to the airport or, you know, wherever, <laughs> which is a long ride, which is more money. Right. Versus Uber Eats is, you know, I don't know, five bucks or whatever. <laughs> mm. So, And can I, like, piggyback on that? I took, like, an Uber to Ventura, like, a couple weeks ago. Uh-oh. And um, w- me and my buddy, we had asked the guy, like, hey, man, like, what's the craziest, like, dry, you know, ride you ever took? And I guess, like, he was somewhere, like, dicey. Not Compton, obviously, the, you know. Oxnard. <laughs> it was somewhere in L.A. And um, I guess uh, some dude was like, yeah, 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 um, 
go ahead and uh, do you mind if we make a couple stops here? He goes, yeah, sure. You know, whatever. You know, and I guess like he pulls over to the street. He's like, yeah, stop right here. Stop right here. And some scantily clad female <laughs> pulls up <laughs> and uh, he exchanges a transaction with her. And uh, <laughs> then uh, he goes, okay, let's go. And then uh, he pulls up to this uh, sh- shady dude standing on a corner. He goes, yeah, stop right here. And he, he exchanges. This is a driver? No, no, no. The, the, pass- the, the oh, passenger is telling okay, the driver okay. where to stop. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he goes, okay, stop right here. And he, you know, he does another exchange. He's like, hey, man. He goes, you know what? He goes, I, I can't, I can't stand to do this. You know, I can get in trouble. I got kids and blah blah blah. He goes, no, man. He goes, I'll give you two hundred bucks, man, if you don't say anything or anything. He's like, no. sold. <laughs> he's like, no, I can't. If we all get caught and blah 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 and this and that. So, um, he's like, hey, word to the wise though, if you if you ever try to do this again, try to be a little more discreet. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, yeah. I'll request the, Scott. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Scott to take the two hundred bucks. There you right. go. There yeah. you go. But uh, yeah, that was kind of a funny story. Oh I dear. I, I was like, oh man. Poor guy. I haven't Ubered in a while. Usually when I do, like I, I try to get them to tell their war stories. Uh-huh. And you always get some good. Like I had somebody that had people having sex in their backseat ones. In the oh, Uber? Yeah. yeah. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> it's gross. Hey, you got to stop that, man. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they're hot. Just watch. Mm, that's true. Mm, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's yeah, gross. I'm kind of anal about my car. I, hey, yeah. hey, hey, don't stay in the seats. I get it. Yeah, it ain't no fun if the homies can't have nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm Here, do it on my jacket. I don't want to get my seats messed up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Dear, what are those stains on your jacket? <laughs> you don't want to know. Yeah. Nope. You don't want to know. I was being a gentleman. It. I put my jacket down for a lady. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Um, so recently started listening to this podcast called the Overcrest Podcast, mm-hmm. and uh, it's all about cars and stuff. I, I sometimes oh, okay. nerd out on cars. And so they, uh, I was talking to them, and they did, they did a segment that's really going to call me out, and I'll tell you afterwards Uh-oh. why. But it's uh, how to tell what kind of car you drive by what kind of beer you drink. So oh, do that for us. Cool. So, so here's uh, the Overcrest, guys. Cool. What's up, Unfiltered Gentlemen? I'm Chris. And I'm Jake. We're from the Overcrest Podcast, a podcast about cars. And when you look across the bar and you can see a guy drinking a beer, you can make a lot of assumptions and stereotypes based on what they're drinking. Absolutely. And, who they are. and you can do the same thing with cars. So what we thought we would do is we thought we'd bring cars and beers together and mm-hmm. see if we can define the person that drives them a little bit. Okay. So I've got uh, my first one is a V6 Camaro RS. So okay. And that's like from the late 80s. It's, it's a total white trash mobile. Um, they're all rusted out, and you even, I mean, they're they are they are totally America, right? Um, and they're trashy, cheap, and they have a mullet, just like anybody that drinks the beer. Um, it's Bud Light. Is the oh, one okay. That. So um, anybody driving a V6 Camaro RS, you could assume they're, dri- they're going to drink a Bud Light. And if they're drinking a Bud Light, you can assume that they probably have owned in their life a V6 Camaro. That makes sense. I like that. I'm going to go a little more international with mine. I'm going with Hasseroder, a German beer. Um, and we're going to say beer. this correlates maybe to a Volkswagen. Yeah. You know, it's somewhat ubiquitous over there. Really popular in Wolfsburg where the exactly. Volkswagen Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So anytime uh, I was over there and I saw a lot of people drinking the Hasseroder mm-hmm. and uh, the problem is that you can't get it here and it's one of my favorite beers. So I've actually had that beer shipped to me a few times from my friends in Germany. Great beer. Next time you crack a cold one, tune in to us, Overcrest. You can find us on all your favorite podcast outlets, iTunes, Stitcher, etc. Anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Take care. Cheers. I've never had Hasse Roder. Me neither. Yeah, Chris was Chris is the the main guy with the uh, nice, sexy, deep, bassy voice there. Yeah. Uh, he was asking like, "Hey, you ever had Hasse Roder? Like, can you can you get it for me?" I was like, I didn't even fucking heard of it. Like, what kind yeah. of beer person am I? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I I need to look for that now. That'll be yeah. my my next thing. So yeah. if you're if you're into like nerdy car stuff, check out Overcrest. Yeah. Yeah. That's the C Overcrest. Um. So <laughs> they talked about like if you have a Camaro RS, <laughs> you drink Bud Light. Uh oh. My first car. It was a 92 Camaro RS Oh, V6. bang, nailed it. Oh, God. What were you drinking then? Back then, Bud Light. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Rocking the mullet. <laughs> did not have a mullet. Oh, damn. Uh, it. I was hoping Somebody I'm closely related to might have. Oh. Oops. Yeah. That's the guy sitting next to you. Oh, yeah. I can totally see that. I can totally oh, yeah. see that. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> For the mullet. I hung on to the mullet as long as I could. Yeah. Longer than you should have. Yeah, nature took it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> when nature calls. And God stepped in like, you got to stop this. Yeah, that's not, that's enough. <laughs> not even I have a mullet anymore. Yeah. <laughs> God stepped in. Scott, <laughs> you must lose the mullet. Oh, man. Yeah, so anyways. All right. Uh, it's time. It's time to make a call to the bullpen. He calls to the bullpen for beer. 
Oh, yes, he does. We have had three magnets on the show before. Uh, we had their, I think it was their milkshake or some, something like that series. And it was really good. I, I love three magnets. I love everything they do when it comes to IPAs. Uh, we are having three magnets Sea Storm IPA. And it's 8.3%, 65 IBUs, 4.04 on Beer Advocate. Bam. It's a couple of four plusers on this show. Yeah, no kidding, man. We're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, this is featuring Columbus, Chillin, Citra, Cashmere, my favorite, <laughs> and Centennial Hops. Taste is hops, almost flat out. Little hints of mango and papaya, but mostly resin and straight up masticated hops. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, and yes. Good stuff, man. I can dig this. I dig it. You know, the, the floral notes are fairly oh, yeah. fruity. There you go. Yes. That, fruity on the floral notes. Yes, and, and I'm glad you said that because that's another description that um, we haven't been using. Mm-hmm. And um, you could totally taste it on this one. Yeah. the um, I get like hops on the tongue, like, well, bam. Yeah. Followed by some nice tropical fruits, I guess as they say, mango and papaya. Totally smell it. Yeah. yeah, followed by like some some pine and dankness. Mm-hmm. That's how I heavy. How I, yeah, heavy floral. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll definitely. masticate all over this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, sorry, whoa. sorry. We need to get him a dictionary. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah. And, and somebody to read it to me. <laughs> <laughs> He'll learn what masticate means. That's right. Um, so, anyways, yeah. So three magnets. I I love everything I've had from them. It's not easy to get. This is great. Uh, yeah. They are from, I believe it's Wisconsin. Oh, no. I'm sorry. They are from uh, the Seattle area. I was way off. <laughs> <laughs> Samsonite? <laughs> I was way off. <laughs> he must work out. Uh, yeah. I'm looking them up right now because I forgot to do that. I thought they are more east, but I was way wrong. They're in the Seattle region. Either way, really good stuff. I enjoy Three Magnets whenever I... Uh, I think it's East Seattle. Oh, yeah. So it wasn't so bad. Yeah. Yeah. You're Seattle. close. East Side? East Seattle born and raised. <laughs> so. East Seattle. <laughs> On the hop yard is where I spend most of my days. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all right. Let's get to some uh, booze news. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. Let's greet. Yeah. Earlier in the show. Let's greet. Just to Throw people off. Yeah, they're they're gonna be skipping to the end. Like, what happened to the burp? Like, yeah. happened already, loser. <laughs> yeah, you missed yeah. it. Yeah, she listened to the earlier part of the show. That's mm-hmm. right. Can mm-hmm. listen to the whole thing. You never yeah, know when Scott's right. gonna burp. Yeah, Don't know. you never know anymore. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> people are tuning in for. Listen, dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so last week it was a big uh, celebration for North Carolina. This week, congratulations to Oregon and Washington. Boom. They will now be getting. 805. 805. Oh, wow. Yeah. Damn. Firestone's 805. Uh, I believe it's a honey ale. A, Correct. You know, oh, cool. lager, whatever. Yeah. Is now making its way to Oregon. We can fit out the, uh, yeah, go yeah. away. Come on. Calm down. Calm yeah. down. Hey, yeah. Take it easy. Yeah. <laughs> Just eight, Oregon's going crazy over the 805. I know. We're not talking sticky monkey yeah. here. <laughs> what do they mean 805? I don't know what the 805 yeah. means. <laughs> Uh, I know it's funny, right? <laughs> Eight hundred five was brewed originally to be a just a seasonal, you know, like specialty thing, and then it caught on so well. It's like back in two thousand twelve was when they started brewing it. Caught on so well, they kept it year round. Wow! Um, by two thousand fifteen, it hit the top twenty five list of beers being sold, but it was only distributed within California. Hmm. Wow! That's how fucking popular it is. Boom! So and now how drunk California is. Yeah, that too. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Firestone has like a whole 805 brand and like wow. 805 swag that you can buy in t-shirts and stuff. So like it's super yeah. popular. I see a lot of hats and t-shirts around here. I don't. Yeah. Not sure about the rest of the country, but yeah. Right. Yeah, around here. I see a know. lot of them. Yeah, there's a few in this house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be very local. I, I try not to get too local on here, but it's gonna be very local. There's a, a pub out here, an Irish pub called Brendan's. Correct. There's a few locations. Way back when Brendan's first opened, they had their own honey blonde ale. It was Firestone. It was 805, what became 805. Oh. Firestone used to do contract brewing for Brennan. So they had a couple of Brennan's quote unquote beers. It was like a Honey Blonde Ale, an IPA, and a Stout or something like that. And the Honey Blonde Ale is the same thing, the 805. I used to get it all the time because you could put that down so quick and it was delicious. Yeah. And it became 805. And, yeah. and no one's officially told me that, but uh, I'm fairly sure that's the case because it tasted exactly the same. And uh, around the time Firestone stopped doing contract brewing, around the time 805 popped up. 
So I think they did contract brewing the same recipes for other locations. Uh, and it would be like, oh, and now it's my restaurant's Honey Blondale, whatever. And they just sold it off and didn't take any royalties for the name. Makes sense. Yeah. So congratulations, Oregon and Washington. Maybe we'll be on the map for being in the 805. That's right. It would be like the 310 <laughs> or 323. 818 and uh, I can't remember the song. <laughs> but I got hose. <laughs> Different area codes. Area. <laughs> uh, have you guys had Smutty Nose Brewing? No. No, I haven't. I have, and it's really, really good. I believe it's East Coast. I believe it's uh, like Massachusetts area. Um, had them in one of my beer shipments. Really enjoyed what they had. And apparently they're not doing so well right now. And they're going to be auctioned on March 9th. So if anybody's looking to buy a brewery for around $10 million. Dilly dilly. Wow. Yeah, I know. You know? I know. That's Look, that's a time for someone like the dilly dillies to sweep in and get something real cheap. Yikes. Because uh, Smutty Nose has quite the, the following. They attribute to some of their recent losses to all the microbreweries opening up and kind of, you know, it, there's a lot to choose from nowadays. Right. Back when they started, they started like in the 90s. There wasn't so much to choose from. Mm-hmm. So... Um, Sad news for Smutty Nose. I really that like them. Sucks. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, hops. Oh, this is good. This is good stuff. Hops have been recognized as Herb of the Year by the International Herb Association. Mm. I agree. Yeah. 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 Dilly dilly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the Herb of the Year last year? That's a good question. You Ooh, know what I mean? Good question. Yeah. yeah. I got some herb for you. I know. Yeah. I don't know, man. I know what the herb next year is going to be. Yeah, especially in California. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. You know, speaking of herb of the year, mm-hmm. I have been doing some research, and I will be brewing a marijuana Ooh. IPA. Oh, snaps. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm actually very excited about this. I did a lot of research um, because hops and weed are directly related. They're like sisters, essentially, in the plant community. And I mean, if you smell hops, it smells a lot like weed. Correct. And, and a lot of beers you get have that like dank weed smell to it. And so it makes a lot of sense. So I've been trying to research like... How can I directly replace some of the hops or all the hops with weed? Mm-hmm. I finally found a guy who did it, Ooh. and he shared his recipe. Okay. The only problem is his recipe calls for three quarters of an ounce of marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> it's like three hundred dollars. Wow. Oh, so man. how much is this beer gonna cost? Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Wow. So my options are to either like see who wants to go in on it. Like, yeah. I got five on it. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll brew it, or to see if I can convert it to oil. You know, like do oils instead of straight up weed because mm. that's way more concentrated. I need way less. Mm, that's true. So uh, I found a recipe. It actually sounds like a really good recipe. It has a lot, has a lot of hops that kind of have that dankness to it to like complement the weed. So I'm excited for it, but I got to find a way to make it cheaper. <laughs> yeah, man. So if anyone wants to donate some marijuana. <laughs> that's crazy, dude. Yeah, but I, I'm really excited. I think it'd be fun. And the guy said it's a lot like just having a brownie, like same kind of effect. Oh, really? Yeah. The I only, can imagine. Yeah. The only yeah. issue I'm going to have is, like, I always bottle in bombers because it's half the effort. Cause yes. You have to do half, there's no way you're going to want to drink, drink a bomber of this. Oh, man. I'm going to have to go with 12s for sure. Yeah, you're going to have to split yeah. that up. Uh, as long as you lock the door and stay inside. <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder if it's like, you know, like brownies, too, where in the sense, like, you know, you can only, like, no, you don't need a whole brownie. Yeah, I don't Normally, know. if brownies are on the <laughs> table, I have about six. <laughs> You know what I mean? But if it's weed brownies, I have a bite. Right, exactly. You know what I, mean? so I wonder if it's the same thing with beer. Like, you know, you don't want a whole beer. You just want a yeah. little taste. Yeah, I made that mistake once. Mm-hmm. My first brownie, I yeah. had half and like waited 20 minutes. I was like, I don't feel shit. Yeah. I had the other half. Oh, fuck. Oh, my Dude. God. And then I had to drive home. Oh, oh my God. Wow. So anyways, that was a tangent. But anyways, <laughs> uh, I am going to do my best to brew some weed beer. What else? Ooh, anybody looking to get married? Scott's trying not to spout his beer. <coughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, on Valentine's Day, mm-hmm. there's a brewery offering free weddings. No. I'm getting still not interested. I'm no. getting looks and <laughs> they uh, got to pay me. Of, yeah, yeah, a looks, lot. Looks and the sound of crickets. How are they going to do that, man? All right. So engaged couples who are craft beer lovers. A lot of beer, a lot of marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> this is the wedding venue that you and your savings account have been waiting to find. Mm. Milwaukee's Lakefront Brewing is offering couples free wedding ceremonies and vow renewals on Valentine's Day. You know what? Call me. Here's my number. Mo. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if somebody wants to get married at a brewery, you mean? Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. wow. 
Uh, Lake Any Br- kind of marriage. Give me a call. <laughs> Lake Fr- <laughs> Are you going to counsel them? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Lakefront's free Valentine's Day weddings offer a ton more awesome perks. Here's what you get in addition to uh, getting married. All right. Let's see if this entices me here. <laughs> Maybe me too. Two free pints of beer. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it gets better. Wait, wait. Two each person or just two I'm guessing couple? like one each. Two, oh, two okay, okay. But you also get a six pack to take home. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, for the honeymoon. Uh-huh. Okay. Two Lakefront Brewery t-shirts. Wow. I got married at Lakefront Brewery. (laughs) (laughs) I hope so. I end my life at Lakefront Brewery. Two Lakefront Brewery cookies. Mm -hmm. Engraved pint glasses by request. Okay. And a professional photography session by request. Hmm. Yeah. So essentially you get eight beers. Six pack. Eight beers. uh, Two pints. Maybe what you do is you go get married and then very quickly have it annulled, but keep the beer. (laughs) Well, that's since true. we, I can get remarried. My wife doesn't drink, so well, oh, that's perfect. That's eight yeah. beers for you, yeah. and, and and it's free. It's all free. All that's that's what this article says. Wait, hmm. it's all free. Free. I mean, it's Milwaukee. You got to get out there. Yeah, hey. that's true. Damn it! Wow, there's Let's always just a catch. go to Vegas, shotgun there's, it. Yeah, there's always a get catch. a six pack, get hammered, yeah. mm-hmm. ruin your life. Yeah, <laughs> but here you could ruin your life for free. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, like you said, the the trip over there. Yeah, well, that's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vegas trip is cheaper. It would be. Yeah, you can fly for like sixty bucks. That's right. Uh, all right. Well, we'll move on. Speaking Please. of speaking Please. of uh, Uber yeah. Eats, Taco Bell. Oh, uh, <laughs> a man a man tries to order Taco Bell from drive through and gets arrested. Oh no! For DUI. Uh, a Florida man, shocking, was arrested for driving under the influence after pulling up to a drive through window and trying to order a burrito. What's wrong with that? Yeah, exactly. Douglas Francisco, 28, had reportedly fallen unconscious after entering the drive-thru lane at the Bank of America (laughs) in Spring Hill on Wednesday afternoon. Oh, man. Martin Clausen, the bank's manager, says he reached out and knocked on the window window (laughs) of Francisco's blue Hyundai sedan for some time before the unconscious man roused himself awake and placed his order for burrito. (laughs) Cousin then informed Francisco that he was not at Taco Bell and called the police. Oh, man. Oh, Idiot. man. What a narc. Bank of America only has hamburgers. Yeah, duh. Yeah, what, <laughs> what an idiot. What, hey, you what, remember, what time was this? Uh, I don't think it said. Yeah, because I'm wondering what time the bank was open. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. He was so hammered. He thought no he pulled kidding. into a Taco Bell. It's like the middle of the day and this guy's hammered. Day drunk, dude. Oh, what a hero. You know what I'm no saying? No kidding. Yeah, it, does. Had, it was about four or five. I mean, Jesus. It does not have a time, but what it does have is a picture of the Bank of America, uh-huh. and then the caption, this is so good, the caption says, pictured, not a Taco Bell. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah. I wonder if it was next to a Taco Bell. I wonder if he was just confused. But that's a good point, Maybe. though. I mean, what you made was, I mean, the banks are like... They're closed, day- man. Yeah. Daylight hours. Yeah, 5 yeah. o'clock hits, and they're out. Yeah, so it has to be like sunny out. Yeah, that dude is day drunk for sure. Day drunk. Yeah, man. Hero. He is my hero. <laughs> wow. That's could, crazy, dude. Could you imagine being that hammered by the time banks are still open? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, hey, it's 3.30, and I am eight sheets to the wind. <laughs> you, you know what's interesting about that is, is, yeah, okay, I've been day drunk, but not during working hours either. Let I mean, me head guy, up to the Bank of America and get me a taco. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I mean, the bank was open. It, it had to have been Monday through Friday. Yeah, well, this guy. That's true. Oh my god! While or, everyone's slaving away, this guy's getting day drunk. If it was a Saturday, like banks sometimes are open until yeah. like one o'clock on Saturdays. The, yeah, the drive earlier. Yeah. yeah. So can yeah. you imagine like he's that hammered at like noon thirty? <laughs> I need more details. I know this fucking story doesn't have more details. <laughs> Fuck you, Fox News. That's right. Uh more ways than one. <laughs> um, all right, and finally, it's that time of year again. <laughs> Girl Scout cookies. Yeah. So we have for you mm-hmm. pairings to have with your Girl Scout cookies. Oh, good. Beer pairings. All right. Yeah, and you should tell all your Girl Scouts. You know, to, yeah, <laughs> have some beer with you. I your... was thinking that right now. No kidding. So what do you got to go with a stout here? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, I see you have Thin Mints. What would go well in the alcohol department? My mom says I have to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you're ordering s'mores, you could put with it a... Uh, <laughs> Cascade Brewing Creek Ale, mm. 
Upland Brewing Blackberry, Epic Sour Brainless on Peaches, or Breakside Brewery Passion Fruit Sour Ale. So they really want you to go sour if you're ordering the uh, the s'mores, which is a new cookie. I've never even heard of it. Uh, s'mores? Right. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know what a s'more is. S'mores cookies. Yeah. You're killing me, smalls. Yeah, it says it's a uh, graham cookie that is dipped twice in cream icing before covered in delicious chocolate blanket. And then the other half is graham cracker sandwich filled with chocolate and marshmallow filling. Hmm. All right. Never seen it. Nope. Uh, Caramel Delights. Hmm? Mm, I like Caramel Delights. (laughs) Uh, You could get a Westbrook Brewing Company fourth anniversary chocolate coconut almond imperial stout. That sounds super rare. Correct. Uh, <laughs> you can get Dragon's Milk Reserve. Uh, that's good. That's uh, up north. That's easy to not easy to find, but easier to find. You can get Prairie Artisan Ales, Prairie Paradise, or you can get uh, Modern Times Beer Monsters Park, which is a bourbon barrel stout with uh, coconut and cocoa nibs. That one's obtainable also, and delicious. Hmm. Thin mints. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Oh man, love me go. some. You know what you do? Freezer. Love frozen thin <laughs> That's the best. Uh, Great Divide Oak Aged Yeti. I can attest to that. Ooh. Have you guys had a Yeti from uh, Great Divide? No. Don't got, think so. Oh, so good. And the Oak Aged is really good. Mm. Uh, Deschutes Brewery Obsidian Stout. Dogfish Head Worldwide Stout. Lost Abbey Serpent Stout. Yes, please. <laughs> and oh, my favorite on this list, Firestone Walker's Parabola. Boom. Mm-hmm. Does anybody here eat the lemonade cookies? Lemonades? Mm-hmm. No. I do not. Yeah, nobody should. We're going to move on. Yes. <laughs> uh, shortbread. 21st Amendment, he said. Uh, Winta Brewing Company, Sea Legs. Fatheads. Battle Axe Baltic Porter. Yes, I have talked about I just hit the desk. I've talked about that one on the show. <laughs> Fatheads. I had it up in Portland. They had the Battle Axe Baltic Porter. It tasted so much like Sticky Monkey mm. and was mm. a fraction of the price. Nice. Uh, Founders Brewing, Backwoods Bastard. That's a good one. Uh, Shirley Brewing, Simpson Scottish Ale, Alaskan Brewing's Smoked Porter. I don't know about you fellas. I don't like smoke in my beer. I haven't um, had enough smoke. Mm. If it's somebody else's, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Dosey Doze, the little peanut butter sandwiches. Oh, yeah. I like those. Those are good. Uh, <laughs> not with somebody else's smoke. In no, no, no. Not with that. <laughs> no. uh, um, McKellar's American Dream. I haven't had that. I, I have had McKellar, but not that one. Mm. Uh, Great Lakes, Elliot Ness. Devil's Backbone Brewing Vienna Lager. These are very specific. Yeah, no kidding. Kansas City Beer Company Dunkel. All right. <laughs> a little more nationwide on here. I know. I could have went with, you know, IPA or, you know, <laughs> brown. Something, or, yeah. Yeah. Savannah Smiles. I don't even know what that is. Mm. Uh, it sounds like a sex move. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're having it, Savannah Smiles, you can maybe get a Avery Brewing's uh, Lolico <laughs> El Capallo. I don't know what I just said. What the wow. Hell? Casey East Bank, Side Project Brewing's Beer Blanc, or Door County Brewing, Big Sister Whit Beer. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, Tagalongs, the peanut butter patties. Here we go. Oh, I like oh, those. Yeah, this is good stuff. <laughs> and I can attest to this. Belching Beaver Brewery's Peanut Butter Milk Stout. Boom. Oh, there okay. we go. Yeah, Come finally. On. Okay. Finally, we're on board. Readily available. Yeah. Here's another good one. Evil Twins Imperial Biscotti Break. Horse and Dragon Brewing's Sad Panda. Never had that. <laughs> Sad Panda. Uh, or Founder Brewing's, Founders Brewing's Lizard of Cause. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Wow. Uh, I think that's all the good cookies. Perhaps. Yeah. yeah, there's some other garbage cookies. What the fuck is that? Thanks a lot. Dude, you know, I don't even know what yeah. they're called, man. Yeah. <laughs> I just like, I'm like, give me that one. And there's a, a raw, raw raisins. It's an oatmeal cookie loaded with raisins and Greek yogurt. What the fuck is wrong what? with you people? No, nobody wants that. Give me some Thin Mints and some fucking peanut butter cookies. Yeah, no right. kidding. Please. Some old people get it. Yeah. Why don't the Boy Scouts sell cookies? I don't just know. the Girl Scouts. <laughs> just curious. We should know. call them and ask. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Find next out. Year. Yeah, next, next year we'll find out yeah. why. Discrimination. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're being racist. That's right. Anyways, I think that's it for us. I think so. I think we got to everything. Yeah, when we started discussing uh, Girl Scout cookies. Yeah. (laughs) That's about it. That's that's where we get the news out. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, everybody, for listening. Please keep telling friends (laughs) about the show. uh, And check out, uh, or be on the lookout, I should say, for our March Madness bracket. Yes. Yes. That'll be a lot of fun. I'm very excited for that. Uh, Make sure you check out Beer Girl at InstaBeerGirl and all the uh, social medias, as well as itsbeergirl.com. Go check out the Overcrest podcast if you're into some cars. And, uh, hey, Oregonians and Washingtonians. I think that's real. Uh, 
go enjoy some 805. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what's up, Compton? <laughs> 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 what is up? I think that's everything. So uh, the unfilteredgentleman.com and slash listen is how you can find out about the show. 805-538-BEER-2337. Drunk dial us, please. Please. We need your calls, your drunk dials. Uh, or send us some emails. Calvin, we miss you. Come, Come on, on, Calvin. Calvin. Yeah. yeah. Come on. The Unfiltered Gentleman. Need some Gmail. ice cream. Give us a call. Yeah. The Unfiltered Gentleman at gmail.com. Please call us. Yeah. Take a dump. <laughs> <laughs> ice cream dumps. Uh, social media is the Unfiltered Gentleman, except for Twitter at Unfiltered Gents. I think that's everything. <sighs> Stay hydrated out there, everybody. Mm-hmm. On that note, good night, everybody. Hey.